Now again, we're trying to come up with a structure for this name. Carbons, aldehyde, there's the hydroxy group. I think this is what both of you came up with. By the way, uh, minor note, notice that it, we generally do not treat the hydrogen on an aldehyde as a hidden hydrogen. We generally do write in the hydrogen on a aldehyde. Another minor note, this is a stereocenter. The hydroxy group here is a stereocenter, but they didn't tell us whether it's R or S, so we're not going to use any wedges and dashes. They didn't give us enough information to put in a wedge or a dash, so we'll just uh, draw this on uh, as a solid line because we don't really know what the stereochemistry is. Should I watch it on the red? Okay. And then many times they do it as CHO. That's right. That would be oftentimes in condensed notation. That's right. So another way this could be written would be. Dense notation, CHO really means an aldehyde group. So we're working on the spectroscopy problem? Yes. Uh, part A? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you guys have any thoughts about that? So how do you use spectroscopy to differentiate the compounds from each other in each of the following ways? Indicate the spectroscopy method mm -hmm. and the features in the spectra that will be most useful. So the first one. Well, couldn't you do um, One has an OH group, mm -hmm. while the other has an aldehyde. Yep. As we were just talking about, CHO is short for an aldehyde. And one also has, you know, they both have double bonds. I'm sorry? One also has? Okay, they have. Well, one of them. 
So that's the thing that you would just have to differentiate. So what would differentiate those when a... Wait, does also the mass make a difference? Would the mass make a difference? Let's yeah, see, they might have slightly different masses. I don't think that they, I suppose you could use mass spec then, because uh, one of them would have a, I guess one of them has one fewer hydrogen than the other. Yeah. So um, I, I suppose we could use uh, mass spec just to find the molecular weight. I don't know if that's... Two fewer hydrogens. Pardon? It has two fewer hydrogens. Two? I shouldn't look at the answers yet. There's a bunch of other yeah, stuff to talk about. Now, um, I don't know uh, how much you guys have learned or remembered about the spectroscopy for aldehydes. Um, I remember that the, not mass spec, but like infrared of aldehyde was 17 something, and a ketone was a little bit smaller. Okay, good. Well, that's very good. So basically what you're doing is you're remembering that carbonyls are around 1700. Uh -huh. And what type, of, what, what type of spectroscopy was that? Infrared. That's right. Infrared spectroscopy, carbonyl groups tend to be around the 1700 range. Um, so, uh, and we wouldn't expect anything in that range for an alcohol like this. So yeah, that would be, uh, that's maybe the easiest, uh, that would be one of the easiest right there. One of the most important infrared bands to memorize is the carbonyl band around 1700. Like you said, it, it's slightly different places based on what type of carbonyl compound it is. But around 1700 is the carbonyl uh, absorption. So uh, that, would be, uh, that would do it right there. If we could use infrared to, to look for the carbonyl. How about, what would the infrared, what, what would the, uh, do you guys remember, this is also another important. 1650. Uh, let's see, for alcohols? I don't think so, not for alcohols. I think maybe you're thinking about alkenes. Oh, yeah. Oh, 1570? Let's see, that's not usually, uh, that's not the absorption that I remember for alcohols. Oh. There's a, usually a broad absorption, infrared absorption for alcohols, um, say around 3200 to 3500, yeah, somewhere like that. All the way to the left. Yeah. Right. That's right. So uh, um, the important alcohol absorption is in that 3200 to maybe 3500 range. That's again for infrared. So infrared should be able to really do the trick for us right there to, uh, to distinguish between these. So that's one way we could use. Right. Now we should also consider a proton NMR. H and MR, yeah. Yeah. And that would also give us a pretty clear cut way to tell the difference between these. Basically, uh, I don't know whether uh, that, that's probably something that was introduced in lecture this last week. Do you guys remember anything about the proton NMR for aldehydes? Do you remember what, what the, what's the range of chemical shifts for the proton NMR spectrum? For example, we were just saying that infrared. Zero to nine. Yeah. Or more like. Oh, and oh yeah, I do remember. Um, and then or to twelve, yeah, and then like zero to two was something, and then the. So last time we were mainly focusing on things that were fairly far to the right here. We were seeing that alkane carbons tend to be towards the right hand side, uh, um, alkane hydrogens tend to be towards the right hand side here, alkene hydrogens tend to be towards the left hand side, and I don't think last term we ever saw anything in the 10 to 12 range. But if I remember correctly, that's the aldehyde hydrogen range. Uh, I'm not sure, is it either 9 to 10? 9 to 10? Did you just look that up? Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Excellent. And there really isn't very much else that would absorb in that 9 to 10 region. So if you see a 9 to 10 absorption, you pretty much know that's the aldehyde hydrogen. So that's another good one to, uh, to memorize for the future. We're really not going to see much of anything else that's going to be in the 9 to 10 region. Wait, what are ketones? Ketones, uh, well, ketones don't have ages. So good point. You would have to do the carbon. That's for carbon 13 if we were right. to do. Is your course covering carbon 13? Oh, it's in your notes, right. Yeah. Okay, so um, what they said uh, that's the- That's 200 ppm. Okay, so you could also use carbon 13 and the carbonyl absorption there is around 200. Spectroscopy, if it's a, yeah. So we already said that. 
Wait, what are the what were the units for IR spec? The units. It's something like CM, inverse. Uh, centimeter, like negative one. Yeah, inverse centimeters. And then what was it for HNMR? It's also PPM. Yeah. PPM, good. 